Hi guys, my name is Ryan and in this video I am going to teach you how to make this little guy. Her name is Teddy and I'm very proud of her and I will never get rid of her because she's my favorite. I'll do some close-ups in a second but I just wanted you to see the finished product. Um, well this isn't the finished product, this is what I based it on and then I remade her in pink. So. This is definitely not like a beginner tutorial. You should know how to single crochet, increase, decrease, basic sewing skills. I'll put a lot of, um, of tutorials down in the down bar just in case you want to try this and you want to learn how to crochet a little first. It might look like an intimidating project. It's actually not that hard. It's just a little time consuming. And if you want to spend the time, I think it is definitely worth it. The boots are actually my favorite part. Um, I don't show you how to do the embroidery just because I'm not actually that good at it, but I'll try to find some links down below you can follow. So for this project, I used a 4.25 millimeter hook and I used just standard acrylic medium weight yarn. Um, and I also used polyfill to fill it. So every piece of this project actually starts with a magic loop. I'm not that great at showing how to do it, so I'll definitely put some links down below. But the magic part of it is that the loop is sort of like a noose, and once you put your stitches into it, you can cinch it up really tight so that you're not left with little gaps or holes in the middle of your project. And every part of amigurumi or just plushies in general is going to start with six stitches and increase by sixes. Don't know why, but that number just ends up working the best. You can use a little plastic stitch marker. I've just always used a small contrasting piece of yarn and I wrap it around the hook and that just helps me keep track of where I am. A lot of the pieces in this project have 12 stitches so you just start with six and um, put an increase into every single crochet and then you have 12 and that makes it flat. So every new round I just take out the string from the last stitch and then I wrap it around the hook again and that just keeps me in a straight line going all the way up. After crocheting a couple plain rounds I was just showing the difference between the back side and the front side. I've seen a lot of people using the back side as the front but you actually want the little string on the inside of your project and the smooth side is the right side. Once the piece gets long enough, it's kind of annoying for that string to be there, so I just wrap it up and tuck it in. You don't have to sew it in or cut it or anything because you're going to put stuffing in there, so it really doesn't matter. I refer to the pattern a few times. I'm going to put it in the down bar, but I'm just showing that 
The leg is 15 rounds long. When I finish any piece of the project, I just do a slip stitch and then pull it through again and then cut it. Make sure to leave enough tail because you have to use that same string to sew it on. So you obviously want to make two legs, but you want to make sure that you don't cut the string off the second leg because right here you're going to connect the two by chaining five and then crocheting around the first leg that you made, chaining five again and crocheting around to the start. I've just always found it way easier to uh, crochet the legs and the body together instead of just sewing it on afterwards, so that's why I created this technique. Here I'm just showing how to crochet into the chains. It can be kind of tight. Uh, you just got to make sure that you get all five chains and then you get all 12 of the legs so you're not missing any. I like working with it flat at this point just because it's easier to see the shapes and you can see the hole between the legs and where you seam crocheted on each um, chain and now you're just going to increase on either side. All the increases and decreases are going to be on opposite sides where you could say the hips are. I don't use a lot of numbers in my patterns, I just kind of wing it. It doesn't really matter if it's the exact side, just do your best and that'll be good enough. And this is me cryptically motioning that you're going to single crochet for five more rounds. And this is the point that I start stuffing the legs. You sort of have to do it as you go because if you wait till the end it'll be too tight. So first I stuff the legs and then I sew the little gap closed and then I stuff a little more and I just keep going. And I wanted to make the point here that when I stuff, I actually break up the stuffing before I put it in because it does have a tendency to get kind of clumped and you don't want lumps in a stuffing. So sewing it closed is actually really easy. I just use a basic whip stitch which if you don't know just means you start on the same side every time and then at the end I make a little knot and I just push it through the leg and cut it off 
What I like about stuffies is that you don't really have to tie any ends because you can just put them through the body and they'll be hidden. So after stuffing it a bit more, this is when we get to our first decrease. I show you the traditional way, which is to go through both stitches, but I actually like doing it a different way. I don't remember where I found this, but it's way more invisible. You just go through the front two loops and that gets you a decrease that practically looks just like a regular stitch. I'm just showing how to do that decrease again. Um, a lot of the body is basically just a decrease round and then a plain round and then a decrease round and a plain round. That just keeps it really gradual and from looking lumpy. Following the pattern, you're just going to do two plain rounds and then you're going to do a series of decreases and plain rounds as you can see me pointing to. Eventually it starts to look a bit more like a body and at this point I usually stuff it some more. I really try to concentrate the stuffing into like the sides where the quote unquote hips would be. You're trying to create sort of a triangular body if that makes any sense. Now for the next couple of rounds, you're gonna do double decreases, and that just means two decreases on each side, so you're gonna be decreasing by four now instead of two. Here I am showing the pattern again. I like writing it down as I'm going just to keep track. It just helps me remember where I am so I don't get lost. And this is the finished body fully stuffed. It's gonna take more stuffing than you think, so just keep at it and really push it into the sides. And here you can see me start on the head. You just start with a magic loop like every other body part. And then it goes 6, 12, and then 1 increase, 2 increase, 3 increase, blah, 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 until 6 increase. And then you are going to do 8 rounds of plain single crochet. And then decrease back down to 2 decrease. The pattern's pretty simple. You just start with one single crochet and then increase, and then the next round, you'll do two single crochet and increase. And where the increases are will be evident because they stack on top of each other in a line, so it's hard to get lost. And this is where I'm at at six increase. It does look a bit small, but when you do the plain rounds, it'll get larger. This is where I'm at after the eight rounds of plain. And then on the pattern, I'm just showing you that it's basically the same thing as the increase. You're just going backwards. This is what the head's gonna look like once it's fully stuffed. 
you really have to put a lot of stuffing into it and you really want to use your thumb to push it into the sides to create sort of a flatter dome shape. Now starting on the arms, it's actually going to be the exact same pattern as the leg, so 6 and then 12, except this time you're going to do 20 rounds instead of 15. And here I'm just showing that I really only stuff like the bottom half or bottom third of the arm uh, because I want the top to be flat. It looks best when you sew it onto the body. And this is me starting on the ears. It starts like all the rest, six and then 12. And then you're gonna do three plain rounds. And here is where I'm showing the decrease, which is gonna be single crochet four and then decrease. And then after this round, you're going to do five plain and then you're done. And you gotta make two, obviously. Now I'm just showing you what a finished boot looks like. You make it in two pieces. First, the initial boot with the straps and then the little toe piece. The boot starts initially like most of the other pieces with six and then 12, but for the third row, you're actually gonna do two extra increases on opposite sides so that you get more of an oval instead of a circle. Speeding past the five rounds, I'm showing you the last round, which is chain six, skip one, single crochet six, chain six, skip one, single crochet four, and then you just slip stitch and you're done. So the toe piece is really quick. You just start with a six and then you're gonna do a three increase, which means three stitches in one stitch and then two single crochet, another three increase, two single crochet. And then you're going to single crochet eight stitches in the next round. And then in the final bit, you're just gonna do five front loop single crochet and that sort of creates a lip for the front of the toe so it makes it a lot easier to sew on.
and you're going to make two eyes, which is simply just six single crochet. And here I'm just showing you how I make the tail on the back, which is just a little pom-pom. But I wrap around my three fingers for a while, and then I tie a piece of string around the middle, and then I cut it and shape it, and that's it. Just make sure you don't accidentally cut the two strings that you used to tie it because you're going to use that to sew it onto the body later. At first it's kind of a mess so I just sort of flatten it with my fingers and then trim it in a circle and I do that from a couple different angles. Now that all our pieces are done, we're going to start putting everything together. So this is me attaching the head to the body. And my one note here is that there's actually two stitches off. Uh, there's two extra stitches on the head than the body, so you're going to have to do a little finagling. Just go through the same stitch twice on one of the bodies, sorry, two stitches on the body, just so that it lines up correctly. And go all the way around tighten it up a little, tie a knot, and then just press it through. Next, you're going to attach the arms. I'm not very good at sewing, so my attachment maybe isn't the best, but it always turns out okay. So it's kind of just not exactly a whip stitch, just going from one direction and then the next through the stitches through both sides of the arm and the body as best you can, and then tying a couple of knots and making sure everything's like tight and secure so like a little kid doesn't rip it off or whatever. Next onto the ears, I kind of attached it pretty much the same way as I attached the arm, except I made sure to put a couple stitches in the front so you get that nice ear crease, I guess. To try to make everything as even as possible, I try to line it up with the center of the head. So I just put it a little forward. You just want to make sure that it's even lengthwise and the other way. Eye placement is sort of up to you. I like to make them sort of farther down and farther apart. I just think that's really cute, but feel free to do whatever you want. So there's a whole process that I go through for the eyes. First, I take the initial yarn from the back side and I pull it through into an empty stitch far away. And then for the longer piece, I go through each stitch 
go into an empty stitch in the head and all you have to do is go through the same stitch when you're coming back so it makes it a lot easier for the stitches to be directly under the eye so none of the black threading is showing There's probably a better way to do this, but when I'm done, I just go through the same hole where the other string went, and I just tie a square knot, cut it off, and then I just sort of grab a crochet hook and like shove it down and cover it with the polyfill so that you can't see any of the black. After both eyes are done, I take a long piece of black yarn and I do the nose. I don't actually like the shape that I did in this clip, so I redid it, but the idea is the same. It's just one loop going horizontally and then one going vertically through the bottom. I mean, you'll get it when you get it. And then I do the same thing that I did with the eyes to get rid of the long ends. See what I mean? Much cuter, right? I usually add a belly button. I just think it's really cute. So I take a color that is similar to the body but still contrasting. Here I grabbed purple and it's really just a basic small little X and then I do the same thing, tie the two strings together and then just shove it down. For sewing the tail down, it's kind of like sewing a button. I just decide where I want it to be and then I loop through a few stitches, make a couple knots, go around the base of the tail a couple times and then just make another knot and that stays pretty secure. So when it comes to the boot, I take the toe piece and I take the little string on the back and I just uh, shove it inside as sort of stuffing just to get it out of the way and it fills the space a little bit. And then when I sew it onto the boot, I actually use pins just because it's so small and finicky and pins really help me keep it all in place. Also, I cut the clip out because it was gross, but I totally just stabbed myself in the finger and started like bleeding everywhere and I didn't even notice until afterwards, so you're welcome for being spared. After sewing in your ends, just pinch down on the toe a little bit and you're golden. These boots are made for walking and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. And basically after that, that's it. I just sort of push and poke and finesse everything. But you're done. I 
use the same general pattern for a lot of my stuffies, so feel free to design some friends for your little guy. This is definitely a labor of love. Filming this video took over seven hours, but I think a handmade gift is definitely worth it for any child or adult in your life. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and if there's something else you want to see, leave in the comments below.